In the previous video, we have implemented the chunk data and block type scripts. Make sure that you save them when you exit Visual Studio. Now we are going to implement a mesh data. Now in Unity, only the main thread can actually instantiate an object. If we create an object, it can only be done inside the main Unity thread. Otherwise, it will throw an error. So one thing that we will need to do on the main thread when we are also playing the game is to instantiate our meshes and there is no point in adding the calculation of each block so calculating what are the vertices and faces visible to the player in that moment when we are instantiating our meshes we should have already prepared th this data on a separate thread and when it is ready then we can instantiate our new chunk and if we do it across multiple frames, we can be sure that we are going to have a high consistent frame rate. So to prepare our mesh data, we are going to actually create this kind of class. So let's right click create a new C sharp script and we are going to call it mesh data. And again, this is a data file. So we are going to be able to easily push it through a separate thread to be calculated and only then we can put it on the main thread and instantiate our chunk. Let's open this script up in Visual Studio. Okay. I will want to delete the update and start method and delete the mod behavior inheritance since again this will be a data class, it doesn't need to have the mod behavior functionality. Now in Unity a mesh contains vertices and triangle arrays depending on what kind of mesh we want to create. In addition to that, we also will need to provide UVs, so those are the coordinates on the texture that we want to display on our faces of our mesh. So we will need to have array of vertices, an array of UVs, and int array of triangles that points out to the indices of vertices so that we can create our triangles, so the faces of our mesh. So those three arrays needs to be present in our mesh data and those values we need to pass to our mesh when we want to instantiate it. So let's go back to our project. Okay, so this is what we will need to have. So let me paste the fields that we are going to have in this class. In our mesh cl data class, we are going to have a list of vertices. This will be a list of vector three. This will be a list because it will be much easier to add new vertices since not every chunk will be the same. We can have multiple different voxels placed on different chunks and maybe one chunk will have more vertices and more triangles than the other. This is why it is much easier for us to use list instead of an array. This is the same uh, with the triangles. We are going to have a list of integers instead of an array. We are going to convert it when we need to pass it to our mesh uh, to, to instantiate it inside the Unity world. Next, we are going to have a list of UVs to store the coordinates of our textures, which should be placed per each face of our uh, mesh. And next, we are going to have a separate list of vertices, uh, vector threes for the collider and collider triangles. So this will be a list of int. And this is because if we have, some, for example, a voxel of type water, we do not want to, it to block our player's movement the player should be able to cross the water and to enter this kind of voxel. Now, in addition to that, we will need to have a mesh data that will represent our water mesh. Since our water will need to be transparent, so in, it will need to use a different shader or different material that is transparent. And to create it inside a mesh in Unity, we will need to use submeshes, which will need to have some different data. We will need to store it in a separate mesh data file. And at the end, we are going to have a private bool is main mesh. This is just a helper boolean flag that will be necessary to create our constructor. So I have created this water mesh inside our mesh data. And if we delete this if statement, basically we are going to create a mesh that will create a water mesh. It will be a new mesh, which will have a water mesh and it will be a recurs recursive method call that will soon throw us an exception. So to prevent this, we are going to create a mesh data for our chunk in our world script, for example. And by default, it will be set to a main mesh equals true. And if this is true, we are going to instantiate a new mesh data for the water mesh. Otherwise, water mesh will be null. 
So this is our constructor, and I will want to have two methods inside the script. So I know that I have said that we should split the data from the methods, and probably I should have put it in a static class called mesh methods or mesh helper. Sorry about this, but we are going to leave those methods here for now, because I know this code will work. So we are going to first have a public void method called add vertex. So we want to add vertices to our vertices list. To do this, we are going to receive the vector3 vertex, which will be the position, and the bool flag vertex generates collider. So if we have a vertex of a block of type air, we are not going to want to generate a collider or of type water. Otherwise, uh, always we are going to want to add to the vertices add vertex, so to add to our list of vertices vector threes uh, the vertex. And if the bool flag is true for the most voxels, it will be true. We are going to add the vertex to our collider vertices list as well. Next method will be add quad triangles. If we go to Unity, right click, create a 3D object and create a quad, and click in the scene view and click F to focus on it, we can see that it is visible from one side but not from the other. If we take a look at it and change the shade mode to wireframe, and this means that our quad is actually made of two triangles. And now this is connected to the issue that we cannot see the quad from the other side. One reason for it is our default material is set to be rendering faces only in the front. This is to save computational power. Most of the time we only want to uh, render this face from the side of our player and not from under the ground where nothing will happen and the player will never enter. So this is, uh, if we go to our wireframe mode, this is two triangles. Now if we go back to our code that we are going to have, we are going to have a public void add quad triangles. And we are going to again pass the quad generates collider bull flag if we should create our triangles for the mesh collider or not. And we are going to automate it by creating this logic that we are going to add to our triangles list vertex count, so the count of our vertices minus four, minus three, minus two. Next, we are going to do the same for the second uh, triangle. This will be minus four, minus two, minus one. So let me quickly explain why we are going to use such parameters here to add triangles to our triangles list. So the idea is pretty simple. We are going to define our quad by first defining the vertices. So let's start by the, from the bottom left corner and we are going to draw here and we are going to say that this is vertex with index zero. Now this upwards vertex will be a vertex with index one. Next we are going to go to the right and select this vertex and it will be vertex with index 2 and the last one will be vertex with index 3. Now if we take this convention of adding the vertices for our quads then we can, uh, let me change the color, and we can say that we want to add the triangles vertices count minus 4. So let's say that we have added those four vertices, so the count equals 4. So count minus 4 will be 4 minus 4, 4 will be 0, 4 minus 3 will be 1, 4 minus 2 will be 2. So this is our triangle. Starting from the point 0, we are going to uh, up towards the vertex with index 1 in our vertices array, then we are going to go to the vertex with index 2, and the triangle will automatically create the last uh, edge. Now let's change the color to, for example, this pink one, and we want to create the second triangle, so those will be those three lines below here, and this will be 4 minus 4 will be 0, 4 minus 2 will be 2, and 4 minus 1 will be 3. So again we are going to start with the 0, we are going to go upwards towards the vertex with index 2, and we are going to go downwards to vertex with index 3. Now you might see that we are drawing those vertices in a clockwise direction, and here the yellow ones Again, uh, the orange ones were in the clockwise direction. And this is important because if we have our quad or uh, two triangles, if we draw them in the clockwise direction, this will mean that the normal will be calculated from this triangle upwards. And if we are viewing this uh, quad from this side, 
it will be visible while if we were looking off from the other side it will be invisible it will be transparent so those two aspects are important drawing those uh, selecting the indices of a triangle in a clockwise direction and selecting the appropriate vertices to create those triangles for each side of our voxel that is visible to the player okay it was a short introduction to how to create meshes let's go back to our project so again this is our method add quad uh, triangles and the, those are the triangles for the mesh that is visible to us and if we want to generate our collider we do the same so those are the same values later in the tutorial we are going to create logic that adds the vertices for each side of a quad that we are going to consider and after adding the vertices we are immediately going to create the triangles so that we can access the correct vertices create the correct triangles and at the end receive a correctly created mesh okay it was a lot of code to write and a lot of uh, different aspects to cover but basically this is it for our mesh data and we are going to use it to pass the data to the mesh object in unity let's save the script in the next video we will create a chunk renderer script that will send our mesh data to the unity mesh object if you are enjoying this video series please leave a like subscribe to the channel and maybe share this series with others i would really appreciate it it would help me a lot see you in the next video